Hey, so you made it to the third and final part of the walkthrough of creating Tifa, where we will cover UV unwrapping, texturing, materials, and more. If you missed parts one and two, what are you doing here? I'll add the link in the description below so that you can watch these videos. Now, I covered a lot of cool stuff in parts one and two, including the program I'm using, the drawing tablet, everything to get Tifa basically till this point. So modeling, rigging, posing, sculpting, retopologizing, the whole thing. So go check it out if you haven't yet. And if you're just interested in this part, I guess that's fine as well. Now that you watched parts one and two or not, let's get right to it. Whenever you have to manually texture something in 3D, you need to go through some UV unwrapping. So here I will quickly go through Tifa and add seams, then UV unwrap every part of her to get her ready for texturing. Now that she's ready for texturing, I thought I'd show you how I set up her skin material and quickly explain a few things so that you can understand what is happening when I texture her. Down over here is what the skin material setup looks like for Tifa. I'm going to break it down for you guys so that you understand what's going on. So, first things first, we have this main big bad boy which is called the principal shader. And this is where all of the values for things like the color, the specular, the bump is set, okay? Everything behind it are nodes and textures that I created to control these values. So to better understand this, here is what it looks like by default. You can see nothing interesting. So if you take a look at all of the information, we have the base color to play around with the color of the face. We have the subsurface scattering to play around with the translucency of the skin. We have the specular and roughness, so they work together to create the reflectivity of the face. And we also have another thing that I used, which is the normal map. Now I did the same thing for the rest of Tifa, so I don't really have to go through all of it. It's basically the same idea. Now to control these values, you have to understand two types of textures. We have the color texture, so a color, a texture with color information like this one. So this is the skin color texture that I created uh, manually, and we'll see that in the video, where we have all of the different skin color zones. We have the dirt of the skin, you know, the lips, all of that. So all of that. I will enter into the base color to get the diffuse color of the face. And the second type of texture we need to understand is called, well, it's a mask. It's a black and white image. So the black and white image uh, is basically how you control the values of, for example, the specular and how I make it that the nose has more specular than the rest of the face or different parts of the face, like the lips also has a lot more specular or it's a lot more reflective uh, than the cheeks because of the saliva. So again, this is controlled with a black and white image. Uh, I'll just quickly show you how I did it for the metal over here. So you can see how the metal, the part where there's a rust or you know the scratches, it has different reflectivity than the rest of the metal. And this is what a black and white image looks like. So you can see over here, there is rust, so it's brighter and it controls the roughness. So for the roughness, and this is uh, only for the roughness, it's going to be different for specular. For roughness, brighter values basically will have less specular or it becomes less reflective and darker values will become more reflective. For specular, it's the opposite. You can basically just enter these black and white images and see how it works. So anyways, this basically says that anything with a brighter value will have a higher value for the roughness and have, well, basically less reflectivity. Anything with a darker value, it will be quite the opposite. It will become more reflective. But again, the whole object right here is very reflective. And what I did here is control which parts become reflective to get this really interesting look. Now, this black and white image is used for a lot of different things, like the bump map. So if we take a look at the skin over here, and we go to the bump map. So for the skin, I created two different types of black and white images for the skin pores and the skin lips, which we'll, again, we'll see later in the video. But if we take a look at the lips one over here, I'll just increase the contrast so that you can see what it looks like. So you can see that parts of the lips over here are brighter, and this is how I control the bump of the lips. So at the end of the day, with this black and white image, I can control the depth of the lips, the pores, and other parts. So anyways, once you understand the color information texture and the black and white image, you will learn how to control all of these values to get, well, anything you're gonna see in this video. Now that I explained all of that, let's get to the actual texturing. I'll go ahead and start painting the face. Using a low strength brush, I will slightly add some reds to her nose, cheeks, a bit all over her face and ears, then I will paint her lips, which is also known as the vermilion zone, with a more saturated pinkish red color. 
The border of the lips, also known as the vermilion border, is a ridge that catches on some highlights, so I'll make sure to brighten up that area a bit. I'll continue to refine the lips by adding different hues and saturations of reds. Moving on, I'll make sure to add some reds all over the body as well. I'll also add the desaturated blue color in some areas like the eyelids and the lower portion of the face. I'll continue by adding a light desaturated yellowish color for areas where the skin is thin like the forehead or where there might be less blood passing through. The different skin color zones are actually very subtle, so I'll make sure to go back and blend in the colors everywhere so that I have a more natural look. I'll start by adding some dirt all over Tifa. As a fighter, I see her covered up with dirt and blood. This is a small way to add some story behind your work which can enhance your art. Here I'm adding some dark spots and freckles to add some interest while keeping things subtle as I go. Here I'm painting in a black and white image to dictate areas that will catch in more specular like on the nose. Since I'm creating the texture map separately, I can quickly adjust the intensity and other properties of the textures which makes this a non-destructive way to texture your character. I'll set up a bump map to texture the illusion of depth for the creases on the lips. I'll keep the intensity high for the bump map in the material while I texture her lips to easily see the results which I can later decrease for a more subtle natural look. I'll manually add strokes creating a mix of small and big creases and then smooth their edges out. This again is done by painting in black and white values to control the intensity of the bump map. While I'm at it, I'll add in some scars and imperfections all over the face and body. I thought that would be a nice touch for a fighter. Similar to the skin, I'll add in dirt to the shirt with a black and white texture map. I'll then play around with the color to give it a bloodish look. Again, this is just a way of adding some story through texturing and giving your character an interesting finish. Here I'm applying a more intense value making some areas more prominent as if some of the blood is fresher than others. I kept the eyes mostly simple, just made it reflective, gave the parts close to the eyelids darker values for depth, and gave the whites of the eyes a slightly reddish hue. Jumping to the straps, I'll try to give it a more interesting look by playing around with the hue and value of the edges. I'm just thinking of how there might be some wear and tear and areas that lose their color or catch highlights. Here I took a quick second to slightly rotate the eyes. Small things like this can improve the believability of your character. Okay, back to the smaller straps. I'll do the same exact thing as earlier. Here I will use different texture maps to create both a bump and a specular map to get an interesting material for the cloth. I'll go for a somewhat leathery look. Now I'll start texturing the sleeves. Here I'll apply the same bump and spec materials I created for the sleeves with a few modifications. After that, I'll texture the gloves adding some wear and tear, different hues and different values. The way I'm texturing is not completely random. For example, I'll add in some brighter values and different hues in areas like the knuckles as if the color in that area wore out from all of the punches and friction. This will help make the result more believable and interesting. As I continue to texture and set up materials for parts of the outfits that are similar to what we already saw, I will throw in some tips and advice when it comes to texturing. First of all, it is important to understand that a lot of this comes down to understanding the material you are working on and how light and color works. The former can be dealt with by looking up preferences of the materials you want to create, for example, leather, cotton, metal, skin, etc. Each of these materials will look different due to reasons such as how rough their surface is, how translucent they are, and more. By closely observing any reference you find, you will pick up on little things that will make your materials believable and stand out. Secondly, textures tell their own story so use that to your advantage. Adding dirt and blood to Tifa's outfit is just one example. To give another example, imagine you're creating a swordsman. Adding things like deformities, scratches, wear and tear and more to their sword and outfit might suggest that they are experienced and have been fighting for a while as opposed to a spotless sword and a clean outfit. Another quick example is someone who works in a farm. They're very likely to have a very rough surface on the palm of their hands and maybe even hand drips from all of the friction of lifting weights. Last but not least, painting is a good way to learn how to play around with color and light. Shifting hues and values, blending colors, and a lot more are skills you will learn when painting. All of that knowledge will directly apply to your 3D work. You can also observe how other artists paint and play around with color and light to learn from their work. Alright, so here I'll start creating the material by adding a bump map, some scratches, and specular. I will then texture in some rust and eventually make it so that the rust has a different specular level than the areas without it. For the fingernails, I will start by texturing the color. Here I will pay attention to my own fingernails and observe how the colors shift, how translucent they are, how they are affected by light, and how rough the surface is which will affect the specular. 
I'll apply any observations I make and add my own touch to the fingernails, such as adding blood, because, you know, why not? The fingernails have quite an interesting roughness filled in with mini scratches and an uneven surface, just take a look at them under a light source and slowly rotate your hands to see what I mean. I'll recreate that effect with some bump and specular maps using similar methods to everything I have shown so far in the video. I'll also make it so that the bloodstains have less specular to them than the rest of the finger. Next, I'll start texturing the hands using similar methods to the face and body. I'll texture in some creases you get at the finger joints and paint the very interesting colors you will see when you make a fist. You'll notice how areas where the bones push the skin will have a yellowish color at the finger joints and where the bloods will mostly show around these pressured areas. For example, take a look at your knuckles when your hands are relaxed, then make a fist while paying attention to any change in form and color over there. I'll finish the hands by adding some imperfections, blood, and more interesting textures. Alright, from here on, I'll continue finishing the rest of the outfit. To be clear, the rest of the parts that I'll texture are very similar to what I have already shown and explained. So while I show that in the background, let me give a few bits of advice to conclude the walkthrough. If you notice, during these three parts of the walkthrough, I try to explain things in a way that makes sense to any program or medium that you are using. Most of the knowledge I shared is not reliant to any specific program. If you paid attention to all three parts, you will notice that a lot of what I applied is based on stuff like knowledge on anatomy, materials, color and lights, character design, etc. Whether I am drawing, sculpting, painting, using different programs, these things will still apply to a great degree. Hopefully this makes it clear that at the end of the day, a lot of this breaks down to the fundamentals of art and not which program or brush you are using. The secondary part that plays a role right here is the fundamentals of 3D modeling. It isn't as essential as the former in my opinion, but it is still important if you are working with a 3D software. By the fundamentals of 3D modeling, I am talking about all of the things that I already covered like sculpting, modeling, retopology, rigging, UV unwrapping, texturing, how the texture maps work, materials, lighting, and more. Luckily, all of the logic here is applicable to most or all of the 3D programs out there in one way or another. That concludes it for the third part of the walkthrough of the creation of Tifa. Now, hope you guys enjoyed this three-part walkthrough. Uh, it's a new format, I guess. I've never really done it this way. And so I'd like to know what you guys enjoyed about it the most so that I can incorporate it maybe to future characters and do this from time to time where I can cover more tips, more tricks, more technique, and all that kind of cool good stuff, right? So uh, yeah, just subscribe to the channel, leave a comment in the comment section below, let me know what you think, like the video if you enjoyed it, and share it with your friends. That would really help out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome character sculpts and art related videos. You can also check out my store for full courses on character sculpting, texturing, materials, brushes, and more. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, then you will definitely enjoy the next one.